Hey friend, so this is basically how the system works. Uh, I grab a three by five and we are gonna have several little sections that we sort of segment uh, the card into in order to track the information that we're going to need to improve our uh, understanding and on the spot knowledge of what our players have available to them so that we can give them the information that they need and we can uh, expand on our skill game in a way that continues to have some tension in there but also allows for uh, good passive recall call of information and doesn't rely on a bunch of useless checks that just slow down the gameplay and break people out of the narrative. So obviously, uh, in my case, I run a lot of games, so I usually uh, label these to expand upon which game that they are. Uh, this is actually the only tool that I have behind my uh, Dungeon Master screen other than electronic tools. Uh, so this is the one physical thing that I have on hand in order to make sure that the game runs better with the obvious exception of dice and I guess my Taroka deck which I really like for random prompts anyway uh, let's uh, let's dive into that so uh, for this particular game this is for my Tuesday uh, family game we're running Strixhaven and so for the Strixhaven crew which as yet have not come up with a cool name for themselves uh, I'll go down the side first listing with one space left at the top for banners the players. We've got Anala, Justice, we have Waxing Moon, and Bob. It's an acronym for some obscenely long medical name stolen from a kid's movie. And we have Frostfur, whose character sheet is mysteriously missing from my case, so I can't put that in there today. Anyway, once we've got the names down there, we have the usual passives. Uh, we have Perception, Insight, and Investigation, all of which I want to have specifically called out for their character sheets, simply because those passives get used more than absolutely anything else. Then next to those, in the section after that, I'll include Skills, Tools, and languages okay uh, and that pretty much covers it out so I'm just gonna run through this and do that real quick uh, for Anala here we look at her passives her perception is an 11 insight also 11 investigation she went with that one so she's got a 16 her other trained skills I just sort of write really small an acronym like an ACR for acrobatics and usually I'll do one of these for every uh, tier play once a proficiency modifier is going to change then I'll do a whole new one but I will write in in tiny little letters the uh, plus bonus that they have to give myself some idea of what I'm working with so that I can keep track of passives if I've got the opportunity, I'll update these every time they level, but typically you only need to adjust them on a level where they're getting either an ASI or feat or their, uh, path, their proficiency bonus is going up. All right, so most of the time you can leave these for a couple of levels at a time and there's just notable points. So she's got acrobatics at a plus five, ATH for athletics is a plus three, her deception, DEC is a plus four. Uh, inside uh, Intimidation, INT is plus four also. Uh, investigation we already covered in the passive section. So Nature is a plus six. And Stealth, STE is a plus five all right she's a really messy one on her character sheet she has 13 so we've got to cut some kind of slack there and so it looks like she has survival trained as well now that's a lot of skills but we are talking about a rogue here uh, so that's fairly doable when it comes to tools she has got not she has not tracked her proficiencies Though obviously we know that she has uh, thief tools. And since she hasn't tracked the proficiency, we can assume that she's just proficient, giving her a plus five. 
All right, her languages are common. Larose, which was just a group decision that they all decided they wanted a secret language, so they're using the language of the Netherese. Infernal and Cant, in her case. All right, and so I'm just gonna go through and I will fill out each of these in this similar fashion so that I have all of their statistics at the table. All right, and really that's all there is to it. Creating this little three by five becomes the tool that will help me most at the table. We having their passive scores available and easy to get to is obviously useful for the uh, perceptive sort of side of things. But on top of that, knowing the skills that they are trained in allows me to know when I should be giving passive information regarding arcana checks or nature checks, whether they might have a better chance of understanding something that they spot with their passive as an investigation with somebody with survival trained is going to pr produce different information than a passive uh, perception for somebody who does not have the ability to use survival for tracking purposes. Uh, on top of that, knowing which tools are available means that I can tell them when they can leverage their tools in order to make a skill check perhaps with advantage or some other kind of bonuses. And having their languages available helps me to know when they can understand the conversation that's going on and when they can't. Uh, basically, this is the one tool that rules them all for me in allowing me to provide decent information for the players without resorting to what was your skill check can you roll that for me because a lot of the time what we're doing when we do that is we pull people out of the narrative and out of the moment so it's important to be careful about when we're actually calling for a check when we call for a check we want to be increasing the tension at the table and it doesn't increase tension at the table to roll for understanding of tiny little pieces of information or understanding of uh, things that are in play that should be built into a character's basic amount of knowledge. We wanna make sure we provide upfront as much knowledge as a character should easily have access to because contrary to what might be thought or said in many places, you can't actually stand somewhere and think hard in order to remember the details of something that you're looking for. You either know it or you don't, and a passive check is perfect for those kinds of knowledge uses, and this is the tool that makes that possible. But additionally, this also shows me when somebody is attempting something and their skill set doesn't necessarily match their narration, and so I know if I call on a skill check in that situation that it's going to help to ground that character into the actual fiction of their character because a lot of the times players get carried away in thinking uh, of the cool image in their head and they're not necessarily taking the time to role play their character into that situation. Uh, so sometimes that can be a good situation to pull them in. Other times it can help me to lean them towards uh, the action so that if they're talking about this acrobatic movement but they're really more of an athletic kind of character, I can help to guide them towards something that fits their character better and a allows them to shine and be awesome. Uh, so I hope that serves. It's just a quick little tool that I find super helpful and hopefully it will help you too. Thanks so much. Happy adventuring.